I would like to call the, the movement we're seeing in Iran is a remarkable movement today, you know, for unveiling. Um, it's a movement for women's rights, you know. Of course, I'm yeah. hoping that it becomes much more of a feminist movement as we go along. Um, but at this point, I'm absolutely delighted to see that it is a movement for women's rights, the right to wear what they wish. And also, really, it's it's a movement against um, the draconian laws of the Islamic Republic. One area we haven't touched on, and I just want to say, is that just in the last year, the Islamic Republic has really gone beyond what it had done before. You know, they, they controlled women's movements, women's um, uh in you know involvement in the public sphere and you have to wear the hijab and they intruded people's parties but they didn't really ever get involved in sex and to the extent that they did get involved was actually in a positive way because in the 1880s and 90s they had a campaign for smaller families so there were sex education classes in iran um there were, uh, remember, a part of the revolution, people who made the revolution, whether Islamist or not, were very influenced by leftist ideas. Remember, I talked about the big communist party of Iran. Yeah, yeah. So those yeah. ideas didn't die out. They still were there, yeah, even if people called themselves Muslim and Islamist or something. And they put in practice uh, a lot of changes. And so, you know, family planning, uh, uh, and abortion became legal, for example. Abortion birth legal in Iran? Yeah, up to four months, yeah. Okay. Birth control became free and commonly available. Vasectomy became free, and families were encouraged to have smaller... Dr. Afari, smaller. that's so progressive. It was so progressive, they got some awards from UNESCO, actually, for it. Seriously? What happened, wow. what happened was that then the birth rate really dropped. You know, so from about having about six children, uh, it dropped down to like 1.7. And now it's back up to like maybe two, 2.1, something okay. like that. And the government then panicked because it realized that it's just not going to have a young enough population, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for all it's not just to take care of the elderly, but also for its imperialist agenda of, you know, from Yemen all the way to <laughs> Lebanon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so what they did last year was that they put in place a really draconian set of laws regulating uh, pregnancy. So if you're pregnant now and you go see a doctor, the doctor is supposed to actually follow through and make sure that you carry that pregnancy to term. Abortion is illegal. Vasectomy is illegal. Oh, wow. Birth control. They've con they've collected all the um, means of birth control that that are available to them. Um, uh, I mean, Dr. Afar, are these laws that are passed by Iran's majlis, the parliament, or are these just sort of fiats by by acts of fi by, the, by the, the leader? supreme leader says it, and then it's passed by the majlis? I see. Right, and so what that has done is that you know, um, a husband and wife really no longer can be control have control over their family planning because if condoms are not available. If she can't have an abortion, they have two children, they don't want to have any more children. Um, if he can't have a vasectomy, um, they're in a really difficult situation, extremely difficult situation. And this has really angered the population. I bet. I in some ways that uh, it's, you know, people don't talk about it because it's not really quite well known how dramatic this is and this has happened.